Hello everyone. More sources are starting to talk openly about South Korea's position when it comes to North Korea's participation in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And as we said before, you know, where South Korea is at is got to be pretty damn lonely right now. And I like the way um, the Guardian's article covers it because it summarizes it very well. Uh, for South Korea, this is a problem because, as they're saying right there in the second paragraph, North Korea is both an enemy and a next-door neighbor. So I think in that respect, um, South Korea can commiserate with, for example, Ukraine because Ukraine is in the same position too. They have Russia next door, who is an enemy, and their next door neighbor. So that is a problem. And again, how many times those of us who are covering this war, have been covering this war for over 10 years now, told you this is not going to stop with Ukraine. This is global. This is big. It's going to spread. And this is exactly what is happening. And again, another good summary. Um, this war is no longer just European. It is spilling over into Asia as well. Doesn't surprise me. I mean, we already had some involvement with Asia because Russia is in cahoots with China. We already had some involvement with the Middle East because Russia is in cahoots with Iran. And also, some time ago, some months ago, in Moscow, Russia had hosted leaders of pretty much every single major terrorist organization. We're talking Taliban, we're talking Hamas, we're talking Hezbollah. This is documented, if you don't believe me, look it up. They were hosted there as heads of state would be normally hosted, as dignitaries. So this can't be good. And like I said, the effect is global. And once again, everybody wants to know what are they getting back? What's in it for North Korea? And we are talking about cash. We're talking about um, long-range ballistic missiles. We're talking about submarines. Things that are hard to come by for North Korea because of the existing sanctions. At this point, the first 3,000 that already went off, including officers and generals, uh, could go as high as 12,000. And now it's not just Ukraine saying that. At this point, U.S. officials are agreeing with that intelligence. So the big question is, now what? South Korea finds itself in a complicated position. So this is something, this is new to me. This is something I didn't know. So I knew that South Korea um, did sign on to the sanctions against North Korea. So knew that. Um, but I didn't know just how big an arms exporter they were. The ninth biggest in the world. So they're in the top 10. Didn't know that. And the other thing I didn't know is that for all of their arms expertise, South Korea is generally reluctant to get involved by providing weapons to countries that are currently engaged in conflict, and that includes Ukraine. Now, with the deployment of North Korean troops, and not just one or two dozen, but thousands of them, and their potential advantage due to obtaining intelligence and technology and money from Russia, South Korea may be rethinking that particular part of their policy. And um, interestingly, the North Korean soldiers weren't sent to the hottest part of the front, uh, to the Donetsk region, but instead they're being dispatched to the Kursk region. That is uh, the part that Ukrainians foraged into. So, 
We'll see how that goes. And that may determine rather a lot. Um, this is going to depend a lot, you know, how this is going to go. It's going to depend a lot on what sort of response Ukrainian soldiers provide to the North Koreans. Because there is a possibility that having spent a considerable amount of time fighting a far greater, far superior, better equipped army, Ukrainians have a few aces up their sleeves and they can just overwhelm North Korea just by sheer ferocity. Because for all of their military training and all of their demonstrations and army parades, etc., etc., this is different. This is battlefield. This is unfamiliar terrain, literally, not just, you know, metaphorically strange ground, but they re literally have not been there. And no map in the world, even the best one, can prepare you for waging battle, battle on the ground. So I'm sure we're going to hear more about all of this and just we'll see what happens. Despite BRICS partners nudging Putin to do something about, you know, moving towards some kind of peaceful resolution with Ukraine, during his interview uh, with uh, BBC's um, Russia e uh, editor, Steve Rosenberg, you know, when pressed, Putin reinstated his position. He basically said it's everybody else's fault but his, despite the fact that prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, both 2014 and then 2022, no drones were fired at Russia, no missiles were fired at Russia, no Russian citizens were harassed by any foreign troops. Putin insists that NATO started it. Remember, all that started it was Ukraine just asking Russia to stop fucking with its economic policies and political policies and overthrowing within Ukraine, it's their own political matter, overthrowing a pro-Russian president. Instead, Putin turned it not into Ukraine basically fighting for its existence as a sovereign nation, but NATO's influence. Well, that's what he's saying. And while I have no fondness for the late Navalny or his widow, here I agree with her. I'll give credit where credit is due. This is embarrassing. She's right. You know, here we are. We are approaching three years since the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And here we have the head of the United Nations shaking hands with a dictator and a murderer. She's absolutely right. This is embarrassing. And all of Gutierrez's prior, um, you know, basically refusals to do anything decisive about Russia. He did say that Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine violates the um, uh, multiple articles of the United Nations Charter and international law, and the rest of us said, and do you think that they don't know that? Do you think they care? By the way, also, notice, a day, 24 hours after North Korea denied sending troops to Ukraine, and after Belarus, Russia's ally, de denied this happening, Putin said, oh yeah, which is not typical because it takes him up to six months. This is how long it took him to admit that they have hacked off Crimea. So this is new. They said, no, we're getting that. So all of this is happening but Putin only admits any kind of reconciliation on his own terms. And I'd like to remind everybody that Russia is not just still the member of the United Nations, despite violating the charter, but is also still a member of the UN Security Council. More to come.